Industrial revolution in India was lit but a few decades ago to clear the fog of over a century of lethargy. In the beginning, the plant and machinery were imported. But with independence, hundreds of projects were got underway to make us self-sufficient, to improve the economic, industrial and living standards of this subcontinent projects to prove that we could build machines to build India. The Chitaranjan Locomotive Works is one example. Established 14 years ago to meet the country's growing transportation needs, Chitaranjan together with Jamshedpur. But our manufacture is not confined to steam alone. Electric and diesel locomotives are also being made. These locomotives can haul a 12-coach passenger train at 100 kilometers per hour and a 22-wagons goods train at 80 kilometers an hour. All these goods wagons are now made within the country. We have perfected a new design of an eight-wheeler with a very large carrying capacity for the efficient handling of loose commodities like coal or limestone. Passenger coaches too are made in India. The new integral coach combines light weight with strength. It incorporates an anti-telescopic end construction, an important safety factor for millions of passengers. Not only safety, but comfort, particularly for the man in the lower class. Our coaches can today hold their own in any part of the world. The misty slopes of these hills harbour the leaf that cheers a myriad households. Tea, India's largest single item of export. The processing of tea requires huge machinery. The entire plant is Indian from tea leaf rollers to green leaf sifters for the selected leaf and dryers. Then stalk extractors to remove stalks from the pickings leaving only aromatic leaves. Indian made machines right to the multigraders and the final packing unit. Sugar, next to cotton, is our second largest industry. First, we started making individual items of sugar machinery. Today, we manufacture complete plants. 25 years ago, this was a dream. Today, Indian workmen expertly assemble Indian-built sugar machinery. The sugar thus produced goes into jute bags, which brings us to the jute bag and jute fabric industry. Jute is used the world over. Jute gunny bags and sacking are the cheapest and most durable forms of packing, whatever the commodity. Jute fabric requires much skill, techniques and equipment for its production. Till recently, most of the machinery was imported. Now we have started manufacturing high-speed spinning and weaving equipment capable of producing improved qualities of yarn and fabric 
to compete with the products of foreign countries. also manufacture machinery for cotton textiles, wool, silk and art silk. The quality of the machines is proved by the fabrics produced, their range and appeal. Our chemical dyes industry has also started to function on its own. Plants for making dyes vats, filter presses, drying chambers, pulverizers for the next stage of process, and blenders, now all made in India. Sulfuric acid plants are also being fabricated. This chemical forms a basic ingredient of countless industries necessary to progress. The Indian chemical manufacturing industry has made several complete plants for the production of superphosphates, so essential for raising yield from land. Efforts are also being made to design plants for the production of nitrogenous fertilizers. The entire agricultural program of our country depends upon the availability of fertilizers. Fertilizers to feed and revitalize the hungry soil, so that it may in turn feed us. The future of our economy depends on food, ample food to free us from dependence on others. But fertilizing is not all. Crops must have water. One of the sources of water is underground springs, so India makes power pumps. From a modest start, we are slowly getting into our stride. Each pump is put to a rigorous performance test. A variety of pumps for both agriculture and industry. They are exported to Asia, Africa, and even North and South America. The smallest to the large, like this 750 horsepower pump. A great number of such pumps are operated by diesel engines, also Indian made. Every engine is thoroughly tested to ensure its smooth running and low operational cost. The diesel engines, large or small, ranging from single to multi-stroke and vertical or horizontal. Diesel engines also generate electricity, power to turn the wheels of progress, a good deal of equipment to generate, control and transmit electricity is being made by us. We are making electric motors and cables, generating sets, transformers, switch gear, and control gear. Power to meet the hungry demands of more and more industries. Power for offices, homes, India has made rapid advances in the fabrication of heavy structures. Modern techniques are used, like hydraulic riveting and deep penetration welding for high standards of workmanship. Finish is important too, be it a bridge fabrication, the skeleton of a factory that will soon be humming with activity of men and machines and perhaps 
an electric overhead travelling crane. But all our industrial output would come to a standstill were it not for machine tools, the machines that make machines. Machine tools impart the highest degree of precision to machine parts, big or small. Not a single industry could flourish without these vital machine tools. Holding, as they do, the key to all production, Indian-made machine tools are earning a reputation for themselves in industries where they are installed. Machine tools are made in factories all over India. Machine tools for each and every need. Radial drills, milling machines, lathes of all types, heavy duty planers and many more. And so to castings made in accordance with the rigid requirements of quality control. Casting of tools and parts of all shapes and sizes made from high-grade iron and tensile steel. The master metal, steel, the heart of every manufacture. For without steel we cannot build our trains and tools, machines and machine parts. Our steel plants have steadily increased their output. As they expand, more steel will be available to build machines and build India.